Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello everyone. This is Dr. E. Sri Vidya, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. So today we are going to see the topic about a keywords in Java. Normally we know in all the programming languages we have a keywords. So in Java also we will be having a keywords. So in Java we will be having 64 keywords. So what is a keyword? Keywords are reserved words that have a specific meaning in a programming language. So whatever we are going to represent, so everything we are going to represent with the help of the keywords. So there is a special meaning for each and every keywords. So the user cannot be used for our user purpose. So in this context, we are going to see only the three types of keywords that are very useful for our programming language. That is a static, this and the super keywords. So first one, static keyword. So mainly why we are using this static keyword mean it is mainly used for our memory manage purpose. So in static keywords, we can use the same static keywords for our variables, methods and then blocks and then nested classes. So first one, we are going to use that static keyword in a variable. So the static variable gets memory only once at a time that a class is loading. So this is an example for our static variable. Okay. So here I am having a class, class with the name test and then I am having a variable that is a count, count equal to I am initializing the value as 0. After that in that constructor I am incrementing the count values. So in the system.out.println I am going to print the count values. So here the public static void main I am creating a object for the classes. So I am having a test class for the test class I am creating three objects t1, t2, t3. So if I am using that variable with the int count mean without using the static variable each and every time whenever I am creating an object it will be initialized from the starting. So you will be getting the output as 1, 1, 1 only. So um, because I am having a 3 objects so for the 3 objects I am going to initialize the value. So normally it will be starting from 1, 1, 1 only. So now I am using a static variable. So how I am going to use this static variable means I have to use that keyword as a static. So normally we know keyword mean we have to represent everything in a lower case letter. So here in the class test I am having a static int count. So this is the variable initialization and then in the constructor I am going to increment the count value. So now in the public static void main again I am creating an object for a class test class three objects t1, t2, t3. Now with the help of that static variable, so static variable means mainly we are using for our memory management. So here for each and every time whenever that object created mean it will be initialized at least one, only once only. So now that output for that program is 1, 2, 3 and then next one static keyword in methods. So the same keyword we are going to use for the methods. So how I am going to use a methods? So normally if I am having a method outside the class mean I have to call that method with the help of object. So if I am using a static keyword in the method mean we cannot able to use that object directly we can use that method directly in your program. So here it belongs to the class rather than the object of a class. So it can be invoked without the need for creating an instance of a class and then that static data member can be changed the value of it. So here this is an example for your static method class test and then in that I am going to create a one of the method int add. So for that I am mentioning that uh, data type as static. So here it will return that addition of two numbers. So here in the public static void main I am going to add that value. So here directly I am calling that method without the use of object. So here I am using int t equal to test dot add. So you can directly call the class name dot method name because this is a static method no need of an object. So if I use this method with the parameter phi means it will be passing that value and 5 plus 5 you will be getting the output as 10 and then next one static block. It is executed before the main method at the time of class loading. So here in the static block I am having a class and then static block one um, print statement and then after that I am having a main function. So in that main function again I am having one statement. So before loading this main method 
it will be loaded the first method will be loaded as static method only so you will be getting the output as message from static block after that only that main method will be loaded and then next one static in a nested class again we can use that static keyword in the nested classes also so you can access the static data members of the outer class including the private members and then it cannot access any non static data members so for example so here i am having a class a inside that i am having a static string variable that is a static keyword in the nested class again i am having a class which is inside the a class so this is a outer class and this is a inner class so in that inner class i am having a method display method and then after that i am having a main function so here if i am having a class with that class if i am having any method mean you can directly call that method with the help of a object but here i am having a one outer class inside that outer class only i am having a inner class so here how we can access that inner class method mean with the help of outer class name dot inner class name and then you can create a object so here i am creating a object as c equal to new a dot b so you can call the display method with the help of this object so c dot display so automatically this method will be called and you will get the output of the string is static keyword in the nested class so this is the output for your static inner class and then next topic is this keyword in java so normally this will refers to the current class object so here we have a problem without this keyword also so the following example shows how the problem will be facing in your without using the this keyword so class employee in the employee number and string name department so inside this employee class i am having a three variables and then one constructor with a three arguments i am passing and then here i am directly passing the employee number and equal to employee number without mentioning the actual parameter and then here in the display also i am going to display the employee number name and department so in the test class i am de declaring a two objects with the help of that object i am passing the arguments but here i am getting the output as zero null 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 because here i am not referring the actual parameter and the reference parameter so to avoid this problem we have to use a this keyword so here where and all we are using this keyword mean this to refer the current class instance variable and this to invoke the current class method this to invoke the current class constructor and then this to pass as an argument in the method this to pass as an argument in the constructor call and this keyword can be used to return the current class instance so here i am using that this to refer the current class instance variable so first one here i am having a employee class inside that employee again i am having a three variables and then in that constructor i am passing all the variable names but here i am referring the this keyword to refer the actual parameter and then reference parameter so this here refers to the current class variables this dot employee number equal to employee number this dot name equal to name and then this dot department equal to department so here in the display method i am going to display the employee number name and department so again i am having a main method inside that main method again i am having a two objects e1 and e2 so for the two objects i am passing the parameters now i am going to pass the values as integer and then two string values so it will be automatically called to that or constructor and you will get the output as 101 arun and then sales that with the department so next one second one this to invoke the current class method so here i am going to use this keyword to refer to the current class method so here i am having a class a with that inside that class a i am having two methods void show one and void show two so in the void show one i am going to print one string message and then in the void show two i am going to again print the one string message and then in that void show two i am going to call the show one method so here this refers to the current class a with the value of object so this dot show one means it will be automatically refers to the current class method so in the test class i am going to create a object for the class a so a a equal to new a so i am going to call that show method only show to method because in the show to itself i am calling that show one method so the output of this program is from show to method and then 
show from show one method. Third one, I'm going to use a, this keyword to invoke the current class constructor. Class display. Inside the display class, I'm having a constructor display. In that, I'm going to print one statement that is from class A. And then after that, again, I'm having a one more constructor with one parameters. That is a parameter I'm passing as a string parameter. In that, I'm going to call a display that is a constructor I'm going to call that is this I'm using. And then in the system.out.println again I'm going to print that string is. So from that display method whatever message I'm going to collect that one will be called in the display string. So here in the test class I'm going to create an object for the display class. So display d equal to new display I'm going to pass that actual parameter here. So it will be passed to that previous method and then you will get the output as from class A and then your string will be string is welcome. So next one this to the pass as an argument in the method. So again this will be used as an argument in the method also. So in the cl class test again I am having a display method. So in the class display I am having two methods display and the show method. So in one method I am going to pass only the test class that is a test class I am passing as an object. And then in one method, I am going to call that method with the help of this. That is, uh, I am passing that argument in the method. And then in the main method, I am going to call that show method directly. So if you are using like this, this keyword will be passed as an argument in the method. So you will be getting the output as display message from the display method. And then in fifth one, that is this to pass as an argument in the constructor call. So here, again, I am going to call that this method that is I am going to call any constructor with the help of a this keyword. So here class A and then inside that again I am having one more class that is a class B I am going to use. So there I am using a B of B and then in that A constructor I am actually I am passing the class name with the object as a argument in the constructor call. So this dot B will refers to a original class object and then in the display method I am printing one statement string statement I am printing. So here this is a class B. So this actual object I am going to pass as an argument in the class A. So here string S equal to hello I am mentioning. And then here I am passing again I am creating a one constructor for a B class. I am going to create an object for the A class. So A, A equal to new of A. I am passing the original argument here. And then I am calling a display method directly here. So in the main method I am going to call the direct method whatever values I am passing in the B class so that method I am going to call here. So here this keyword can be used to return the current class instance. So class example that example I am going to use a method display method. So you can create a example space display if you give like this mean automatically that display method will be called. So here I am returning that this return this. And then in the show method, I am using system.out.println this keyword. So again, I am using a main method. So in that main method, I am directly using a new example. So already I created a class with the op method name I used. So here I am using a new and then class name dot display dot show. So automatically first one, this show method will be called. And then after that display and then example. So your output will be your this keyword. And then next topic is super keyword in Java. So normally this super keyword in Java is a reference variable which is used to refer immediate parent class object. Mainly this super keyword we are using in the inheritance concept. So the Java super keyword can be used in the following aspects. Super can be used to refer immediate parent class instance variable. And then it can be used to invoke immediate parent class method. And then super method can be used to invoke immediate parent class constructor. So first one super can be used to refer immediate parent class instance variable. So we can use a super keyword to access the data member or a field of a parent class. It is used in the parent class and child class have same field. So this is an example for this class base. So here I am having a string that is one variable I am having yes. And then in the derived class, again, I'm having one variable string s. Yes. So the both the variables in the base class and the derived class are same. But in the system.out.println, you can call that string variable as a first one display. I'm using a yes. So this yes refers to the derived class variable. 
and then in the system dot out dot print and super dot s refers to the base class variable and then in the main method I am going to create an object for the derived class and then you can use the display method. So automatically the derived class message will be displayed and then after that you will be getting the base class message. So second one super can be used to invoke parent class method. So here in the super keyword you can also be used to invoke the parent class method. So it should be used if subclass contain the same method as a parent class method. So in other words it is used in the method as a overridden. So here I am having a base class. So in that base class I am having a method void display and then in the display method I am going to display one statement. In the derived class also I am having a method display and then show method view method. So in that both the base class and derived class I am having a same method that is a display method and then here in the view method what I am going to do mean I am going to use super dot display. Now this display will refers to the base class method display and then in the second method I am used as a show. So in the test class again I am going to create an object for the derived class. So if I am using the derived class object that is a d dot view means automatically that base class method also you will be accessing and then you can access the derived class method also. So third one here super is used to invoke the parent class constructor. So the same super keyword can also be used to invoke the parent class constructor. So this is an example for that. Here I am having a class base. So for that base class again I am having a constructor with one string statement and then here in the derived class again I am having a constructor with the derived and then after that I am calling this super keyword here. So if I use this super keyword automatically that base class method will be called here. Here in the test class I am going to create an object for the derived class D. So automatically what it will do mean the derived class method whatever method it inherited from the base class it will be accessed and then you will get the output as base class and then derived class. So one more example for the super keyword itself will be provided as a compiler implicitly. So this is an example so class base again I am having a constructor base class and then system.out.println I am printing one string statement. So one more thing I am having a derived class that extends a base class again I am having one constructor in that constructor again I am printing one string statement. So in that test class I am going to access only the derived class that is a derived d equal to new derived. So without accessing that uh, super class method and then derived class method can create an object and then with the help of this object you can access both the class method that is a constructor you can directly. So that output will be your base class and your derived class. Thank you.